Hello and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church Sermon Podcasts. On this podcast, you will hear the latest sermons taken from our weekly worship service. Our hope is that you will find joy and comfort in knowing the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ. Holy gave me some batteries. Two batteries. So my sermons will be longer. Oli said he gave them to me so that his nap could be longer. (laughs) Hope you don't mind me sharing that, Oli. Yeah, well, okay. All right, well, we know what will happen to the weeds, don't we? Autumn is just around the corner. And although wheat has been harvested long ago in June... The idea of harvest still comes to mind. Oktoberfest is coming. Or as they say it in German, Oktoberfest is coming. (laughs) (laughs) The time to celebrate the good plants and destroy the weeds that grew with it. And Jesus follows his parable that he told last week, the sower and the seed, with talk about the end time harvest. Today's parable is the weeds and the, har- and the wheat. Jesus tells the story. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while he was, he was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds also, weeds also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came and said, Master, didn't you sow good, wheat, good seed in the field? And then, does it have weeds? He answered them, an enemy has done this. So the servant said, well then, do you want us to go and gather up the weeds? And he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first, and burn them, but then gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus uses objects familiar to the people, as we have seen all along in other parables. The Jewish people knew how to plant seeds. The Jewish people knew how to harvest. An added element of tension, though, is brought into this parable when an evil one comes along at night, sows bad seed into the same field. Who is this fellow? Could it be Satan? Yes, it is, as we heard in the explanation. He sows weeds among the wheat. That had to have brought a chuckle to some people. Who goes around taking the time to sow weeds? Weeds naturally grow. Do you plant weeds in your garden? (laughs) Undoubtedly, you've seen it happen that when your plants are new... Sometimes you can't tell the weeds from the plants you're trying to grow until they get bigger. And you can identify them as good or bad. It's especially true of weeds that Jesus is talking about. In the Middle East, among the wheat, a particular kind of weed, a kind of rye grass, emerges sprouting grains. It looks exactly like the wheat. Not even the farmer who sifts through the seed before planting can tell the difference and ends up sowing the rye grass with the wheat. So it's impossible to tell wheat from weeds until it's time for the harvest. So they grow together. Because there's no recognizable difference when the workers quickly want to pull up the weeds, the master says, no, let it wait. Don't hasten the harvest. Be patient. I'll do the separating at harvest time when I instruct the reapers, not the helpers, to come in, pull up the weeds, burn them, and take the weeds into the barn. End of story. Remember, not all parts of parables are explained, and not all the elements in the parable necessarily have an exact corresponding meaning to something. Everything in the parable is common knowledge, however, 
naturally to the people. Here, like with the sower and the seed, Jesus helps out with an explanation. He interprets the story for his disciples and those who seek him. Again, they have heard, and now they seek. Jesus explains to us, they say, explain to us, Jesus, the parable of the weed and the wheat of the field. He says, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, the end times, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all that causes sin, all lawbreakers, and throw them into fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Jesus reveals each of the seven objects. The sower, son of man. That's Jesus himself. The field, the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. That is the Christians, the believers, those who have heard, and those who seek. The weeds, the children of the evil one. Those who did not believe. Those who didn't give any cause for the gospel. The enemy, the devil. The harvest, the close of the age, this age. The, the reapers are the angels. Explanation of the story is pretty straightforward. The gospel seed falling on the ears of those who hunger and thirst produces faith. And now it leads to salvation in the end times. When the harvest is ready. The fruit of those who have remained rooted in Christ will be seen and harvested according to God's purpose. What here needs no explanation for the people of Jesus' day is that although the weed looks like the wheat, it is bitter and it is deadly and it is not life-giving. The Darnell weed is toxic, bordering on poisonous. Bread containing bits of the wheat looking weed, tastes bitter, ruins the whole loaf, so they have to throw it out. The weeds growing with the wheat can turn the whole field into weeds. This poisonous seed, poisoning and posing as righteous fruit, are indeed the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, who have been in among God's people introducing their own works as ways of getting to heaven, introducing their own poison. And their teachings have poisoned and led astray the people of God. What's in this for you? Now, I know what you're thinking when you read this parable. Your humanity is too obvious. Your thoughts go in two directions, possibly. One... You can start to worry and doubt and wonder like Judas with a guilty conscience. Is it I, Lord? Am I a weed? Do I only look like a Christian? Or am I true wheat? How do I know if I am or not? This parable is not told by Jesus to judge you. Like with the sower and the seed, the parable is not about the soil being good or about the plant being good, but about the seed. Since both the grain and the weeds look alike, the difference lies in the seed itself. In either case, the seed, good or bad, will produce fruit. The other direction you might take sounds something like this. You might glory in that you are the good fruit and glad you're not a weed. Look at me. I'm following Jesus. I go to church on Sunday. I'm involved in every Bible study. I assist the poor and hungry in a soup kitchen. Look at my fruit. My bowels are breaking. There's so much of it. Obviously, that's boasting and self-righteous. In fact, like the disciples, perhaps um, in our parable, you might even offer Jesus to pull up the weeds. Leave it to me, Lord. I'll garden for you. 
I could do the justice and judgment myself. I can tell who's the real deal and who is the poisoned fruit. If it's not like you, then it's not a good plant, right? You judge your fellow Christians comparing them to yourself. You see how lazy some are. And you've even judged others as maybe not quite Christian yet. Heck, a Christian wouldn't go out and party all night and eat with sinners and tax collectors. Oops, Jesus. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. In no way are good fruit and bad fruit determined by you or your pretentious Christian gardening, pulling up weeds and determining what's good and what's bad. The seed determines the fruit. Not everything that appears good is good. The fruit may be deceiving if it comes from a rotten seed. If the seed is bad, the fruit look, may look good, but in essence be poisonous, like the wheat in the bread and the weeds that poison it. Satan is known as Lucifer. Lucifer means false light. He appears as light. He appears as good fruit. What he gives appears to be abundant, but is poisoning the crop. This false fruit is the fruit of those who have closed their eyes to God, do not thirst and hunger after him, have no need for the Messiah, but pass them off, selves off as righteous and good and devout based on their own actions. They have ears but refuse to hear God's call to repentance and faith. The sower and the seed taught us that they are not hungering and thirsting for salvation. They're not seeking after they hear God's call. They want to put on a show, much like the Jewish leaders. Satan disguises himself as truth and goodness, making his fruit look appetizing and good, making godless people's lives and their fruit look pretty darn good as if they had it all together. My neighbor doesn't believe, and look at all the riches he has. Hmm, good fruit or bad fruit? They may be favored and honored by society as examples of goodness. They appear to have everything solved, no worries, successful living, living high off the hog, wealthy, or at least content. They seem to have everything they want, much like Faust, who sold his soul for happiness. They appear happy or at least entertained, spiritually numbed by the blinking lights and bling of Satan's world. But like the seed sown on the path, there are no roots in Christ, the seed which only can produce good fruit. They're in fact fruit of the Darnell poisoned weed. But they look just like the good fruit of the Christian. What's the difference? The difference is the seed, the confession, the repentance, the call to faith, the hungering and thirsting after God and his salvation. Once again, Jesus says, let those who have ears listen up. You who worry about being the good or the bad fruit, you can know for sure who you are. Christ calls you to hear and then to seek. You have tried everything in this world on your own, by yourself. Like Bob the Builder, when asked the question, can you do it, you confidently cry out, yes, I can, but quickly find out that you can't. You know you can't. You've tried. You're tired. You're not getting any better. You're looking for a relationship that satisfies and now hear God's good news because your ears are open. Matthew puts it this way in the third chapter. Jesus says, produce fruit worthy of repentance. By this, Jesus means that the first fruit God raises up in your hearing and hungering and thirsting lives is the acknowledgement and confession of your sins, of your need for wholeness and fulfillment through him alone. 
Your hunger and thirst for salvation have met their end in him. This relationship with Christ will satisfy you and continue to grow. As you continue to build on your relationship with him, the seed then produces the fruit. You're not only good soil by his presence in you, by that same presence the fruit you produce is evidence that you have Christ in you. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul writes about the fruit of the harvest, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit that flows from the Christian because they have the seed of Christ. Not showing off, not disguising themselves in self-righteousness, but living their natural Christian life. Christ produces this in you. As Paul writes again, this time to the Ephesians, where in his passage he says, For you have been saved by grace through faith, not of works lest any person should boast. He continues, For you are his creative work, having been created in Christ for good works, that God has prepared beforehand for you to walk in. We don't produce the fruit. It's Christ's production through faith. Bottom line, those who hear, have ears, hear the call. They hunger and thirst seeking salvation. They believe and are rooted in Jesus' words. They walk in newness of life, living out the fruit of God's spirit produced in them. Only good fruit can come from following the Messiah. John tells this parable, another way for your comfort. He writes, famous chapter of his gospel, chapter 15. I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. Remain in me, Jesus says, and I will remain in you. Just as the branch, you all, cannot bear fruit by themselves unless it remains in me, the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Remain in Christ, O harvest. Water that seed of Christ daily through his word, through his body, through his blood in the sacrament. Watch your life grow and change, sprout and ripen as you continue to grow in his garden. Amen. To know more about Jesus and our ministry at Grace Lutheran Church, please find us at www.gracealoneonline.org. You'll find additional sermon podcasts and your favorite podcast channel every week at www.gracealoneonline.org forward slash sermons.